nuclear testing continues slowly to contaminate Earth's atmosphere with the multiple dangers of radiation. This is of grave concern to all the people of Earth. As a result, it is possible that in time, other planets, such as this, the emerald planet in the Marpet galaxy, will become uninhabitable. The High Council of the Emerald Planet is now deciding what must be done. Good morning! Good afternoon! Good evening. You're watching PNT. I'm your host, simply a hallucination caused by the cameras watching you at this very minute from inside your microwave. Up front this week, according to an article published by UPI and filed under the heading of Stupid Is As Stupid Does, one man in New Jersey found himself on thin ice with his employers after attempting to fake a fall at work. 57-year-old Alexander Goldinsky was working in Woodbridge, New Jersey as an independent contractor to a local business when he was caught on security camera attempting to manufacture a workplace injury in the kitchen. Apparently unaware that he was being recorded, the frigid freeloader is shown spreading ice over the floor and then accidentally and extremely carefully falling to the ground in a splayed out position before waiting to be discovered. Goldensky apparently was discovered by someone at the business as the ice cold idiot later filed a fraudulent insurance claim for an ambulance ride and treatment at the local hospital. Reviewing the footage in order to verify the claim, Goldinsky was caught red-handed by the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office who have filed charges of theft by deception and insurance fraud. PNT can only assume that due to Mr. Goldinsky's slip-up and with prosecutors stating that they will aggressively pursue the matter, our frozen felon will be spending a lot more time on ice than he originally thought. From icy insurance incidents to explosive events, our next story in our weekly roundup of the weird takes us to China, where one small boy found out firsthand the dangers of playing with fire. Security camera footage from a street in Chifeng City in Inner Mongolia shows a young boy playfully walking down the street with lit fireworks in hand before stopping and giving a manhole a look that any mother would know means trouble. Sure enough, the footage shows the scamp insert a lit sparkler down the manhole, igniting a pocket of methane gas underneath with predictable results. The lucky lad is momentarily obscured by the cloud of dust and debris thrown up by the huge explosion before he's seen running off, apparently unharmed. The owners of the cars parked nearby, however, do not seem so thrilled about their dented automobiles. While PNT cannot and does not recommend using fireworks for acts of vandalism or civil disobedience, that's what Molotov cocktails, bricks, and small poodles are for, we must certainly give our bouncing ballistic boy credit for making such a direct impact on his community. For the final part of our weekly roundup of the weird, PNT is pleased to bring you another daytime UFO sighting drawn from the MUFON database. Filmed by the witnesses on January 19th in Kernersville, the footage appears to show twin S-shaped objects hovering and spinning over the North Carolina town. Let's have a look at the footage.
Kind of soon, man. Yeah. They're spinning like. Okay, don't talk this video. You got both of them in it. Just one. It's okay if it's just one. Let me see. Where's the other one? Oh, there's there's the other one. They're going higher up and further away. And it's really strange. Like they're just barely moving. They look synchronized, don't they? Not really. They were cl fairly close together, now they're getting further apart. You can stop it. So what were the objects caught on tape moving, spinning, and hovering over the North Carolina skies last January 19th? Let's run down the possibilities. Alright, let's just save some time, shall we? They're not birds, they're not clouds, they're not stars, meteors, flares, small or large aircraft. Balloons are unlikely due to the steady rotating nature of the objects, and a balloon of this shape and size would drift due to air currents and would likely be unable to maintain such a steady position. There is also no evidence of a frame or structure of any sort supporting the craft. So drones. While it certainly is not outside the realm of possibility, to PNT's knowledge there are no commercially available drones that would match the size and configuration we see here. It is certainly possible that there are custom drones, but it would be very expensive and still not answer the rotational problem. Drones use multiple propellers in order to maintain their position and move about, not a singular curved body that rotates. Even were this the case, the objects rotate far too slowly to support flight of any object not already using some other form of lift. This would also rule out model helicopters or planes. Neither rotates the entire body of the craft in order to fly. Well, how about the possibility that this is the work of CGI? While always a suspicion at the forefront of every piece of footage that PNT examines, in this case, there are a number of factors that speak to this not being a computer-generated image. 
First is the amount of detail and observations given in the witness's statement. As a general rule, hoaxed tapes have limited or no conversation between the witnesses, often having no audio track at all. Also, hoaxers tend to give contradictory or minimal information on the sighting, no location, direction, or time of day. The fact that the witness in this case took pains to include information that might otherwise prove inconsequential speaks to the veracity of the statement, not to the contrary. Still, as we always do, PNT examined the footage frame by frame, looking for the telltale signs of manipulation, including artifacting on the edges of the objects. We found nothing to indicate that the objects had been added to the footage after the fact, at least with the tools at our disposal. So, with CGI at the very least cast into doubt, that leads us inevitably to the possibility that this might be a military test craft. Now, unfortunately, as is always the case, the military is not in the habit of revealing the existence of its secret prototype projects. Which again leads us to the single blatant and repeating problem with this explanation. Why would the military regularly test craft over busy civilian centers where they can easily be seen and photographed? Common sense alone would pick up on this discrepancy. And so, with the world's military is not forthcoming, we must turn to the more interesting possibilities. Is it possible that we are seeing the highly advanced technology of another race? Where would this race originate? Are they scouts of a benevolent society, keeping tabs on a still dangerously primitive race in the hopes that we might someday learn to think of ourselves as one species, one planet among many, and so finally take our place in a broad universe of infinite majesty and mystery? Or are their motivations darker? An advanced scout force for a race not bent on negotiation, but of exploitation? Are there more fascinating possibilities that perhaps we are the experiment of one of these races, and that they have returned to check on the progress of their creation? The question then becomes, what will happen if they decide their experiment has failed perhaps needs to be reset. Has this same scenario been played out on Earth before? The rise of a civilization and the inevitable reset. While it would help to explain many of the gaps in our history, it remains a chilling theory best pondered in the small hours of the morning. But whether or not the objects captured on tape by one mother and daughter last January 19th spinning and hovering over Kernersville, North Carolina, were a pair of custom drones, a classified military project, or something else entirely. We'll leave up to you to decide. Sound off in the comments section below with your thoughts. That's it for this time, faithful viewers. Be sure to click like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when PNT presents your next portion of the paranormal. I'm your host, reminding you to keep an open mind, because a closed one shuts up truth.